everyone, and welcome to another voice flow chatbot tutorial. I'm super excited for this tutorial that I'm showing you today because you're going to be learning how to build out a salon and barbershop chatbot for either a barbershop that you own or for one of your clients if you're an AI or chatbot development agency. But I just want to remind you before we jump into the demo here really quick that you need to stick around to the end of the video to get the discount code for this template so that you're not starting from scratch. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started with the demo. So here is the chatbot that I built out and embedded already into a professional barbershop website. So we can see here that there's five main functionalities of this chatbot. There's our services, which is a service catalog, our stylist, which is a stylist catalog, and booking and appointment automation, a hair cut estimator tool, and a general question section. So we're going to go ahead and walk through some of these really quick before we jump into the technical parts, just so that you can kind of see how everything looks. So let's press on our services. This is from someone who is looking for a haircut. Outstanding. Let's say I want a regular haircut, no facial hair stuff. And I'm going to say, okay, we've got buzz cuts, textured cuts, tapers and fades, lineups and trims. You can edit this however you want when we get into the technical parts. And I'll make sure to walk you through all this. But let's say I want a buzz cut. So I can press on find a stylist. And it's going to pop up with all of the stylists who work at this shop. And it actually showed me the specialty of beards and buzz cuts, this artist here named James. And I can visit his Instagram to learn more about this specific barber, see some work that he's done to make sure I can trust him. And I can also schedule an appointment directly in this interface. So I'm going to press schedule an appointment. And this part is something that you get to change on your own. So this is probably something that you wouldn't necessarily want to display to your users, but when you develop this chatbot, you'll get to choose whether you want to set up the Calendly or CRM automation, and I'm going to walk you through both. So let's go ahead and press on Calendly. And the one thing I love about Calendly is that you can integrate it with so many other things that allow you to connect to other CRMs and things like that, but it also lets you schedule appointments directly in the VoiceFlow interface. So we can see here that it comes with a calendar. I can select a time for an appointment. It's really, really cool. Great, so let's assume that I booked my appointment. That's kind of what that appointment booking automation looks like. Okay, we're set. Now, let's just say that I actually didn't see the cards before that displayed on um, the different costs and I wanted to get a cost estimation for my haircut. Now, this is a functionality that I added as an additional thing. You can remove it or add it as you like. I just thought it was a really cool feature that could be useful for certain use cases. So I added it as something extra for you guys. But we're going to get an estimation here. I'm going to say I want some haircut services. Outstanding. What type of haircut am I looking for? Let's just say I'm looking for a buzz cut. I'm going to cut off all this curly hair here. It outputs just the general estimate for what the, the haircut might cost. Now with a little bit of prompting and some of the knowledge base that I'm going to show you how to use later, you can change what it outputs in this specific situation, but here I just told it to output a general range. So the person can press yes, let's do it. And what it'll do is take them back through that scheduling automation. But this time I'm going to say, no, I don't want to move forward because I already booked an appointment. Outstanding. So there we just quickly demonstrated some of the most important functionalities of this chatbot, but I'm actually going to walk you through all of the flows that we built out for this so that you can have a good understanding of how everything is structured and understand sort of how to build this out yourself or just follow along with your template to better understand it. Before we get started, I just want to make sure, but before we get started with all the technical aspects, I just want to make sure that you guys have all the resources that you need. So number one, you need to have a voice flow count. If you are not familiar with voice flow, voice flow is an outstanding tool for building AI agents, and it's actually what we're using today to build out our chatbot. You can use the link in the description to get signed up for VoiceFlow. Just go ahead and click that and get started. Make sure that you press get started, sign in, everything like that, and we'll be good to go. Additionally, if you want to find more templates like the one we're working with today, you can check out my agency, Botterra, and find all the templates that we use for our own clients in our shop. You can go ahead and find them at the link in the description as well. But now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our chatbot here. And if you already got the template, you should have all these things on your screen already. If not, that's okay, you can follow along. So we're on our home workflow, and we can see here that we have the introduction that says, welcome to the Botterra Barbershop, how can I help you? And then we have a home menu here that walks us through that original page we saw that says our services, our star stylist, book an appointment, haircut cost estimator tool, and general questions. Now this is the most simple flow in the entire thing, so we won't spend too much time on this. So the next aspect that we have in this home menu is the services. So we can go press on services here, 
And this is a pretty simple flow that's sort of just like a catalog. So what we're doing is we're introducing the user that says, welcome to our services catalog. And then we're moving over into two options. Now, what's happening here is we have the two options of haircuts and facial hair, but you can edit this however you want. Say you're a nail salon and you do manicures and pedicures, or you're a women's salon that does maybe like different coloring and things like that. You can have all of those things as an option here and you just branch them off into separate catalogs. So let's just take a look at these catalogs here. We uploaded an image. We went ahead and just typed in buzz cut and we put in a price, but you can put in the description here, whatever you want. And then we added a button. Now these buttons are super important. We said find a stylist. And what we did was we added an action. So when we press this plus sign here, we can add an action. And what we did was the action that we did was going to a specific workflow, which if we go down here is the stylist's catalog. So that's the workflow that we connected to with that button. It's the action that we added was just to go to that specific intent. Now that applies to all of these cards here. Super simple way of setting it up. Really easy way to link to different stylists and things like that. And we also set that up for our beard services. So this is the exact same concept where you can press the button to go to the catalog of artists or stylists, just like that. So again, we click on this, click edit, we can go down to our stylist catalog. Now there's another feature that we added here that's super important. It's called the no reply. Let's say that we want to have a menu pop up if somebody doesn't press find a stylist so that they can continue on with the flow. Um, you can press on this little settings page here and press the no match or in this case it would say no reply. If we were to remove this, we could add no reply and just say generate one response and say, how else can we help you? And then add a path and the action tied to that path would be going back to the home menu. So if somebody decides not to answer or not press on find a stylist, we just send them back to the home menu after a couple of seconds that way. And make sure that you change it to like three seconds because 10 seconds can be a really long time. Okay, moving on to a really similar functionality is the stylist catalog. This is almost exactly the same flow. So well, you can add as many stylists as you want here. You can separate them by specialty. Um, you can have a button. Let's say we decided to separate our artists um, like this. We went ahead and added a button. And we decided to separate them by haircut and beards. We could go ahead and do that. And we could just link the haircut artists here and we could link the beard artists here and you could just change this however you want to so you could change this to different artists but you can have it break off into a flow like that which is super duper nice it's a really great functionality that we can add here but for now we don't really need that we're going to keep it nice and simple so we're going to go ahead and do just a regular connection connecting the artists here and amazing so now diving in a little bit more into how these cards work, we have our different artists here when we drag and drop a carousel, which we can find at talk and then carousel. And we have a lot of buttons that we added here. We have three buttons. We have view the stylist Instagram. And the way that we add this Instagram is by clicking on here. We press add button or click on the button here. We press view stylist Instagram as the words on the button. And then you can add a link to their Instagram URL or whatever social media you want to connect. So that's how you connect that URL. We also have schedule an appointment. This is the same thing as what we had in the services catalog earlier. We're connecting it to an intent and that intent is booking an appointment. So when we go down here, appointment booking, select appointment booking. That's what we'll be connecting to when they press schedule an appointment and we're about to go into the appointment booking section here very soon now we also gave the users an i'll pass button if they don't want to view the instagram or schedule an appointment they can just press i'll pass and it'll leave them to the home menu awesome so we have four artists or hairstylists here you can add as many as you want um, right here we added just like links for you to connect to their instagram or social medias so now let's move into the appointment booking which is a slightly more i guess complicated aspect of this. All right, so in appointment booking, if we recall, we had Calendly and then the CRM automation. So let's say we were to press Calendly in this situation. So we say, great, use the calendar below to book a time and consultation. And then we can paste in our Calendly link. So what's going to happen here is when you go into your Calendly, there'll be a link that you can generate that you can copy and then just paste it into here. Now I set mine as just like a variable. So you can put it as 
the variable your Calendly link here, and you'll just paste that Calendly link right there in that variable. So make sure that you do that. Then right now it says, sorry, we can't find this page, but when you actually run it, it will connect to this variable that we put in this iframe snippet of code here, which you can copy yourself in the template or just type it in if you don't have the template. And you'll make sure that you add the variable Calendly link so that you can connect to your specific calendar. That just comes up with a pop-up. It says, please book one of the times. And then it says what else I can help you with if they don't book a time or they're ready to move on after booking a time. Great. So now moving into the CRM automation, let's say we wanted to connect this to Salesforce, HubSpot, Vagara, which is a very common stylist booking platform. We could also use this automation where we have the user share their name, their email, and then we post this to an API URL. So what we did here was we connected some form data. So what we're going to do is you would press post and you would paste in your webhook or URL that you want to send the data to. But we also need to make sure that we format this data correctly. So in the body section here, when we press the plus sign for the body section, we press on form data. And there's two pieces of data that we collect and store in variables. The first one is the name. And then we put into the edit variable down here, the variable name. So over here, we can see that under name, we captured the user's reply and we would set it to name. We're capturing the user reply, setting it to name, and we're setting that information in this form data to name. Now we need to do the same thing for the email. So we have this variable. If you don't have the template, you'll need to create a new variable here. But since we already have the variable set up, we'll go to email outstanding and then we can post that information using a webhook or some sort of API URL sending that information directly to the API outstanding so then if it succeeds it'll say great we'll be in touch if it fails it'll tell the user to just email this customer support and it'll say what else we can help you with and navigate them back to the home menu cool beans so the next feature that we have is a pricing estimate this is another pretty robust system. It's one of the bigger systems in this tutorial. Now, this is something that you can choose to add or not, totally up to you, but we have the pricing estimate here. It just comes up with a talking block where it says, answer a few questions and we can give you a price range for your haircut. And it says, what service category do you need? So we're just gonna say haircut services or facial hair services. And then we go into um, just like a form or with some buttons which we can find this here at listen and drag in a buttons sort of thing. And we can put in the buzz cut, the taper fade, the texture cut, all the things that we had in our services catalog. The same thing applies for the beards down here. And we put in a set AI block that we put right here. Outstanding. Oh, the set AI block. And we can add the variable, which I already created, but it would be called haircut type. Right, and we press create variable. We would set the variable haircut type to the last response. So last response is a variable that's automatically created in voice flow. So you can just press last response and it will capture whatever the user presses in these buttons and set it to the variable haircut type. And then it will send that information over here to a response AI block. So I took this response AI block, I dragged this in here, outstanding. And what I did was, if you have the template, you'll have this prompt here, but it says, the question is, what is the minimum price for a haircut type? So the variable that we set to whatever the user presses as their button, it'll just say, what is the minimum price for a buzz cut, for a fade, whatever we need. And then we gave it some instructions here that it is a barbershop secretary who supplies estimates for haircut, oops, there's a spell typo there, services. So we're prompting it to go through our knowledge base here and find out how much that haircut will cost. But you might be asking, okay, how is it finding that information? How does it know this? Well, we have something called our knowledge base here. So if we press that back button, and just to show you again what I did, I was here and I pressed the back button in the top left. And if we go to our knowledge here under agent, we can see that we have a knowledge base here. Now you can add a data source using a URL, a sitemap, you can upload a file, plain test, you can even integrate your Zendesk. But what I did was I just added some plain text and I pasted in how much everything costs. So I took a, basically a barbershop menu and I just input all the information that they need. A buzz cuts $20, a texture cuts $30. Everything like that is in this knowledge base. And what happens is when it comes out with this pricing estimate, we can see that we used a 
response AI connected to the knowledge base block, it'll use that knowledge base to output how much those haircuts cost. So if we press the preview button here, we can actually see how this works. So how much is a taper? And we can generate it. And we can see our estimate for a taper haircut would be $35. Now that's pretty accurate to what we had originally put in that document, which is outstanding. So it answers the question, then it flows into, would you like to schedule an appointment or consultation or whatever? If they press yes, let's do it. It immediately takes them back to that appointment booking flow. If they press no, I want to move forward with something else. It'll take them back to the home menu. Great. The other option here is if there is nothing that is found, let's say the knowledge base doesn't find an answer to what they asked for, it can take them down this flow as well, which is just a email capture or lead capture where it allows for the shop owner or the art, the hairstylist to respond to that person with an estimate via email instead of having the chatbot do it themselves. All right, the last thing here, and I know that was a big chunk of information, is the general question section, which is pretty simple, one of the simpler flows in this chatbot. It's gonna say, what can I help answer for you? And we're gonna capture the user reply to a variable. We're gonna capture that user reply to question. Outstanding, so we capture the user reply, whatever they type in as their question. It could be, what are your hours? We capture that user reply, and we put in a response AI block. Outstanding, oh, a response AI block and we press on knowledge base, just like we did with the pricing estimator. And the question is just going to be the variable question. And just to show you guys really quick, to put in a variable, you put in a curly bracket, and that immediately opens up your list of variables. So in this case, I went ahead and selected question as the question. And then I gave the AI model instructions that says you are a customer support service agent, your job is to provide answers to potential clients, blah, 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 just general FAQ stuff. Great. So it'll output the answer to the question based on that prompt. So we gave it the instructions. It'll just type out the answer to the question based on what's in the knowledge base. And then it'll ask the user if they have another question. If they do, it'll send them back over here to the FAQ questions block. If not, it'll take them back to the home menu. Now let's say that the answer to the question wasn't found in the knowledge base, it'll say not found, and it, we, we can go through this flow here of unfortunately I cannot find an answer to your question, please email email at email.com for assistance, or you can connect that flow that connects to the CRM which we saw in the appointment booking page and workflow where you can connect that instead so that it automatically processes the user's question. So that is the conclusion to our tutorial for today. Um, that's pretty much a summary of how the whole thing works and the flow of everything. Remember, if you do not want to start from scratch, you can go ahead and get that template in the description and you're going to use the code Botterra Barber as your discount code to get this template. Make sure you use Botterra Barber to get the discount code. And, um, yeah, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you want to do a more in-depth tutorial of everything, let me know in the comments. And also, please let me know in the comments if there's any templates you'd like to see next. But once again, thank you all so much. I appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next